Hey. Welcome back to Adobe Live Day 2. Yeah. My name's Ellie. I'm here with Adam Kuhn, and um, we had a lot of fun yesterday. Adam was working on a really cool illustration, an illustrator, and um, we're going to keep working on that today. He has more to show you, so we're excited that you guys are here. Say hi in the chat. Let us know if you were watching yesterday. Let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Heidi, Jose, Sam. I see Noor and Tim in there. Thanks for saying hi. You guys had some really awesome questions yesterday, so keep them coming. Um, Adam is a graphic designer, an illustrator, and full-time freelancer, so um, there's a lot of wisdom there. And um, yeah, we'd really love to have you guys participate and hear what you guys are interested in. Hi, Chloe. We have Kara from Texas. We are in San Francisco today, but Adam came in from New York, so a little ways away. Um, Paul from Romania, Belgium, another Texas. Well, cool, we're so glad you guys are here. We have a full schedule today. Um, this morning, Kathleen was on with another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. You can watch the replay if you missed that. Um, it was super, super helpful. Adam is live um, from now until 11.30 when we have an XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard. And then at noon, there will be an XD stream with Chris Cannon. And um, yeah, you want to make sure you stick around for that. It looks like they were making some cool stuff yesterday. Um, and then as always, we have our chat and win. In about 30 minutes, you'll have a chance to win some stickers from Sticker Mule. So you want to stick around for that. Stay active in the chat and you'll have a chance to win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. And then we also have our daily creative challenge. As I mentioned earlier, Kathleen did a demo this morning. You can watch the replay. Um, the challenge for today is to design graphics for a t-shirt using gradients and adjustment layers. And you can get all the information on that right above the chat. There is a challenge tab. If you just click on the word challenge, um, you'll have the file, the starter file there, the info on how to join Discord and submit your work. So make sure you do that during the stream um, because Adam can offer some feedback for you guys. Um, in about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and we really want to see what you guys make. So t-shirts are super fun. I yeah. want to see what, what your t-shirts look like. So it looks like we have Karen from India, Malaysia, Washington, D.C., Iowa, all mm -hmm. over the world. So thank you for joining. As you can see, this is what Adam was working on yesterday. Um, do you want to go ahead and introduce yeah. yourself again for anyone who missed our stream yesterday? Uh, yeah, I'm Adam. I'm a Brooklyn-based uh, designer slash illustrator. So yeah, I make a lot of whimsical, uh, fun art that's a flat vector and um, mm -hmm. yeah, different characters going on and yeah. Yeah, lots of fun characters. Um, and you worked with a lot of cool brands. So you guys definitely want to go check out his work, um, adamkuhn.com and Instagram is adamjkuhn if you want to see more. Um, and you can search for him on Behance as well. Yeah. So cool. So do you want to tell us um, a little bit about what this project is that you're working on? Uh, yeah, so I wanted to, one of my favorite places in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn is uh, is um, Turk's Inn. It's an amazing restaurant slash like a uh, concert venue. And um, I go there a lot and I just uh, really wanted to illustrate it and like the feeling I get when I go there and just like, uh, it's really fun. And like uh, something about it is like uh, retro and it's like a Wes Anderson movie. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I just, I was really inspired by that to illustrate it. And yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, from yesterday, I just uh, I continue with the color blocking, and today I'm like really want to focus on um, the textures as well as like uh, the different um, stroke and line weights that we can do with the texture. So cool. Yeah, just focus more details. On. Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday, if you missed yesterday, Adam started with a sketch that you made in Photoshop. Yeah. Right, and then brought that into Illustrator. Um, and then kind of showed how he fills in all the colors and chooses color schemes and all those things. So you can watch the replay from yesterday if you want to see the yeah. recap of that. And um, I found it super helpful. So definitely go watch that if you are interested in learning how we got to this point. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I have different patterns. Like there's a pattern of background I can show you how I made. Like, yeah, like, that would be fun. Yes. Yeah, Start with that. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I really just, uh, this one, it was really cool just to make your own pattern, just have it be uh, unique to your drawing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, uh, I just went in there and I grabbed my, I have my uh, pencil with me on my Surface Studio and I can just go in there, 
grab the pencil tool and just uh, just start drawing what I want and filling in the colors. So it's really cool to have the space of the um, the shape that you want yeah. it to be contained in, and just like and just fill in the colors. Yeah, and then um, yeah, whatever goes on the edge, you can just like cut it or or you can like trap it within there. So mm -hmm. just group it all and uh, trap it. Mm -hmm. If you want to move it around later, but yeah. Cool. So you just freehanded that whole pattern. Yeah, it's like okay. it, it's. I'm really into. It's like it reminds me of the 1960s and just like this yeah, like, kind of psychedelic. Like psychedelic. Yeah, yeah, that's really fun. So just like keep drawing and um, cool. having the pattern line up and just trapping like I did below and. And it's uh, really uh, also from there. It's uh, sometimes it works to uh, just make it um, a pattern group. So uh, I, I have it saved in my swatches as well. Oh, okay. So then when you save it as, as a swatch, can you apply it to other shapes later? Yeah, it's really great. So I like uh, I tried it on this, uh, the window treatment. Uh -huh. And I just like clicked that shape and it made it into that pattern. That's so but handy. It, yeah, you so just so, save oh, it and yeah. then you don't have to recreate it over and over. You just like fill it in. Yeah, it's great whenever you're starting a document to like uh, just think, think about the patterns that want you want it to be in there and just like... Uh, um, just saving a color library and just like different patterns and you can just use them throughout and like ha already be set up. Yeah. Do you want to show how you saved it to a swatch? Oh yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna take, make my own like little pattern, a quick thing up here. Mm -hmm. Steve says reminds me of the Beatles yellow submarine movie and uh, graphics. It does, kind of the uh, colors yeah. to the yellow. And Chloe says the illustration looks great with a minimal color palette. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I like the colors a lot. Minimal, but then so poppy because they're like such bright colors. So yeah. It's really fun. Yes, yeah, a lot of the colors working for catching. themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you made your pattern. Yeah, I made the pattern and okay. I grouped everything together and okay. then uh, object and really it's just a matter of pattern make. And then uh, that. And then it adds it to it as a swatch. Yeah, so it's like you'll just see it over here and then mm -hmm. you can, yeah. It, cool. That way you can edit it or do whatever you want to it, and you have your own uh, special pattern. That's super handy. Yeah. But yeah, Lee says it looks like a lava lamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, so there's uh, that one. And so uh, today I want to keep going with uh, this line work, and just okay. how I apply that to just like the Turks in-house, and um, yeah. Just this is what like the front of the restaurant would look like? Or yeah. it looks like? Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, focus on the, the line wakes to bring out the detail in mm -hmm. it without shading, and then you can uh, add shading as like an added like uh, touch. Okay. Just like, to really show that, all the detail within the piece. Mm -hmm. Nicole says, I like the style, has a vintage look. Oh, right, thank you. Yeah, retro vintage. It's fun. And just like making sure everything lines up with the uh, edge and mm. just like looks even and clean. Mm. And so yesterday you showed how you put your sketch at the very front, the very top layer, so that you could see all the lines as you're working. But then you just hid that layer just now, right? Yeah. So, so that it, you could see the actual illustration. Yes. Uh, sometimes it's nice that it's like I know what's going to be there, so I can just mm. eyeball it myself and just have it. Because uh, sometimes the lines lines are too much, and like yeah, it gets, it'll kind of uh, mess you up. A yeah, because my drawing is only like so much that. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have like actual. Do you know exactly what you're making. Yeah, yeah, and know what it will look like without, because those lines won't be in the final. Yeah. Um, image. So to be able to take them out and see what it's actually going to look like. So now I'm just going to go ahead and like group this. Um, I'm going to take this out. Now I'm just going to group the uh, restaurant itself, so it'll okay. be its own thing, and I can just it would just be easy just to, like to play with it that way. Mm -hmm. So to bring it into its own, um, I don't even know what you would call that. It's like not its own window, but its own like it, it, like this where it's separate yeah. from everything else. You double click on it. Yeah, right? just double click on it. Yeah, yeah and it's uh, I can just that's that way I can just have each item and just uh, double click on it, and um, mm -hmm. I can edit it. Uh, and then you can work is. just in that group and nothing will affect anything else yeah. around it. That's super handy. Let's go with this. 
Oh, Nora's asking if you add animations to your illustrations. I'm picturing your art in an animated artwork on a website, and it would be great. Do you uh, add animations? Uh, no, not yet. I usually go in the agencies and I provide like a storyboard, so it's okay. been great to see those uh, made. But uh, yeah, I haven't really done my own animations. I love, I know After Effects, but I just need to like mm -hmm. uh, apply my illustrations to it more. Yeah. Yeah, that's another route I want to go. For yeah, sure. that would be really cool, especially because you have characters. So yeah. So characters could be really fun in animations. Yeah. Little stories and yeah, that's a great question. So uh, now I want to start playing with uh, just like uh, the actual edge, like they're all like straight edges now and like, mm -hmm. they're really clean and everything, but it's cool like to get like a hand done feel. So okay. I want to play with like uh, just uh, edges that have texture. So it's like a solid shape, but the edge of it will have a texture. So I, I use um, uh, Retro Supply Co. They're really good like for uh, brushes. Like there's uh, different people uh, out there that are already making really good brushes. So it's, it's kind of nice just to grab those, so. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Uh, Tim says, I believe After Effects can read Illustrator documents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually how I start. I just make, I just hand off the Illustrator document okay. and then uh, someone else animates it. So, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, but you kind of give them the story or the idea of like what yeah. the, the animation should be. Yeah, we're starting from an original like script that we're both like uh, making that's sure cool. we follow. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That's fun. So really, you just, uh, over here, I already have the brushes preloaded, just, okay. um, and I just, like, uh, pick the one I want, like, that would uh, look cool and, like, have this jagged edge, and then um, really just add more detail to the piece, mm -hmm. along with the grain that I'm adding here soon. So you can already see it's, like, a hand, it uh, like, it's been like stamped. Paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just more texture and more dimension to it. Yeah. So I'm like gonna go down here and apply it and just like add more. And then another thing, just uh, as like um, a quick thing I do, I have this like, uh, it's just like Vector, uh, True Grit made this where they just like took a different textured paper and it's, uh, it's already been vectorized and like, that's like a whole other thing to show how to make them. But um, yeah, just uh, I can just take one of these backgrounds and add them to the work that I'm working on. So okay. they're all just textured. They're black now, so I can, mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how I can just bring it in and. So they're all different ones, so you're gonna pick which one. Yeah. That's cool. I really want to see like what this looks what like. So. Look like. It's a really easy thing. It's just double click on the background and then just uh, paste it in there. Okay. Paste in place. And it can just be like a simple way to add texture really quick, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. and it looks like it's almost like this. Uh, hand on paper. Yeah, that's really fun. I'm just like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try white and it, it might be too much so I can just like play with it. And... Lee is asking um, about the textures. Did you make them or could you, can you buy them somewhere? Uh, yeah, I bought these, yeah. I um, This is a uh, company called True Grit and then uh, Retro mm -hmm. Supply is really Retro good. Supply. Yeah, sometimes I, uh, I do make my own textures. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the one I started with in college which I can show you. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Tim says you can make your own vectorized texture by taking a photo using Adobe Capture or using the Live Trace feature in Illustrator. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. you could bring a photo into Illustrator and then um, if you Live Trace it, it'll kind of make, you can make it, you can select like how the outcome is. Yeah. And how detailed or not detailed it is. Yeah, Williams says it's cool they're able to sell those because they're so easy to make, yeah. So. Um, Justin's asking if you've ever made your own brushes. Oh, I have, yeah, I have. Um, mm. There's these ones I've been using since college because okay. I, I really was like after the the grainy effect. So uh -huh. I, and I was like, oh, spray paint does that. So yeah. these are just like spray paint, like 
blotches that were like live trace. So. Okay, and then you brought them in and live trace them. Yeah, so it's it's really um, I can just like bring the use them as to shade with as well. So sure. So right now I'm just like multiplying the background texture and just yeah. so it's like a darker version on the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like a quick and easy way to do it. And nice. Yeah. It's, it just adds to it and just, I don't want it to be like too distracting. And yeah. You want it to be more subtle. Yeah. Um, Anthony is asking uh, how you got your start as a freelance designer. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I kind of, you kind of just have to like go with it, even if like uh, you, you don't even know what's going to be ahead. So just, I, I definitely have savings or something, but um, yeah. yeah. You were ready. You <laughs> yeah, just, I just take like, the leap with nothing. Yeah, I, I yeah. felt like I was, you just have to feel like you're at a good place, like where you, mm -hmm. uh, you won't be like starving later on when you get out there. But it was nice to have like, I kind of just went for it and I didn't know what was going to happen. And yeah. Um, yeah, just like, uh, it was nice to just like, have that time to focus on that too. Mm -hmm. And you had, so you were working at an agency, right? Yeah. And then you were doing work on the side as well. Yeah, so you so kind of knew that you had some clients already and you were gonna have some kind of income coming in before yeah. you took the leap. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that, that, that helps. Yeah, there's like so many factors involved, so. Yeah. And then Andres is asking, um, I just got in, how do you choose your colors? Oh yeah. Um, that's really just like based off of uh, my brain. Like I made swatches. I knew I wanted to be like at least, I think it's like four, f uh, five colors now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just started with these uh, swatches up above and then, um, I started adding color as I went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you added that blue color. Yeah. And that really kind of made it pop even more. Yeah, and I, I recommend like, uh, I used to like uh, just look at other people's artwork and what was working in there and just make mm -hmm. your own palette from there and just like uh, just look at what's working and what you like and uh, the subject matter it helps a lot with like finding the right color. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the brushes like making your own brushes Justin's asking what's the trick to making them flow well um, if you make a texture into a brush I'm having issues to get making them flow well. Uh, yeah. Flow well. I definitely I struggle with that as well, and I just uh, I just play with like the width and just like keep mm -hmm. uh, pushing it. Sometimes it doesn't like work for me, so I just like uh, definitely the width, like playing with that, and yeah. like, just making sure. Uh, yeah, that's like the only way they do like flow weird, like based on like what brush it is. So yeah, if it's, yeah, just like try other brushes or something like that. Um, and then have you always worked in Illustrator? You also use Photoshop sometimes too. I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you kind of, did you start in Illustrator? I started in Illustrator, yeah. yeah. And then uh, sometimes I uh, use Photoshop just like mostly for like the shading. I, mm -hmm. It's like, it's easy to get it the done there. And, yeah, and it's like, yeah, to add more detail. So today I'm doing it in Vector, but a lot of times I do do it in um, Photoshop as well. So mm -hmm. it's really, Good. Some people can do uh, the flat vector art in Photoshop, and like th yeah. that's really awesome. But it's um, yeah, I, I, I think it's better for me when I do it in Illustrator, and I just like transfer it over. That works for me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever works for each person. Yeah. Um, and then we have a question. Williams asking, is this uh, a certain perspective that you drew in? I'm kind of bad at drawing in perspective. Do you have tips on that? Um, yeah. The per uh, um. Some people use this perspective tool, but I, I yeah. really just like force it because I, I look at like what the uh, the way I'm looking at it, and just, uh, that just comes with like time for me because I um, I just keep looking at it and like oh that that looks weird. Why is that going that direction? And mm -hmm. just playing with it even more, changing like, it and seeing if it how yeah. it looks a different way. And I do t honestly ton uh, tend to work like where it's not there isn't perspective. So sure. Oh yeah, Tim says you could use any colors and you can recolor the artwork using recolor artwork later which is true. Oh, cool. That's the great thing about Illustrator is you can so easily change colors and a lot easier than if you were drawing on paper. Yeah. But less final. Mm. <laughs> and like we were talking about yesterday, when you make swatches or when you have your colors saved as swatches, when you adjust the one swatch, it adjusts all of them. Yeah. So all the colors that have that use or that swatch in the artwork, so you can easily like recolor everything yeah, very quickly. Yeah.
We have about eight minutes until chat and win, so make sure that you are in the chat and ready to win some stickers from Sticker Mule. Oh yeah, Nora says I remember a previous live where the artist used vanishing points for perspective. Was epic. Oh, that's cool. That sounds very, oh, yeah. very cool to watch. Um, I was asking, why are you using a Windows PC? Don't talk about your. Uh, yeah, I, I've always like uh, had a Windows, and I just like I I use Macs as well, but I just always like the way it, like uh, you have more control. I felt like with the Windows, mm -hmm. so yeah, just like you can do whatever. I don't. I yeah, it, it's just like different people, like yeah. different ones. Yeah, and I then guess. with this one, you can draw directly on the screen, so that's yeah, that was the main thing. I I knew I couldn't like afford a Cintiq at the time, and then yeah. I just like I was like I, this one you can draw on the screen, so I'm gonna yeah. uh, I tried it and I I really liked how it worked, but it yeah, it isn't the same as a uh, Cintiq, right? But yeah, it, it works. Do you want to? Well, if, I don't know. I'd be curious to know how you made the little like circles around those circles, the little lines around the circles there. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. So these, um, this is like a really quick thing, uh, just like to, cause I, I really wanted these to be even, mm -hmm. each one of the little pegs. So mm -hmm. I, um, I started with this, uh, the circle as it is, and then um, I made like another. I know I wanted an inner circle, so sure. it's I uh, shift alt and just it makes it smaller within the circle that's in, and just like uh, narrow it down to yeah. like a size that you're happy with. And then, um, yeah, I, I, then I'm going to do a control C and then control F, and then uh, make like a slightly bigger circle outside of that, and I can adjust it if I need to. Sure. But uh, and then you can just uh, add a, a dash. Mm -hmm. And make uh, make it uh, longer and like adjust like uh, how many dashes you want like by doing the gap tool. Yeah, so then you that would put more points between each gap. Yeah, right? yeah. So now it's like a, a five, so I can do like seven and just see like what that looks like. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. It's a nice way to add some extra little detail in there. Yeah, and I don't know if the, uh, I always have this problem where there's like a. There's an extra dash, so yeah. if anyone knows that. I've had that too. I don't yeah. know how to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone can help with that. Cool. Thank you for showing that. Yeah. Taylan is asking, do you create color groups to try different palettes later on in this kind of work, or do you usually stick with that first palette that you picked in the beginning? Uh, yeah, I do usually st uh, stick with the first palette that I made along the way as I was working and just uh, adjusting that. But then I, uh, usually at the end, I like make multiple, uh, I duplicate the artwork and then I just uh, play with the color, uh, global colors, and just like, it makes it an easy way to just like uh, try different things and mix it up. And, mm. and uh, like I said before, uh, the client usually asks for it on a white background and a uh, darker background. Sure. So. so you have to kind of have two color palettes. Yeah. Or the ones that could work both ways. Yeah, but you like you pick these colors based off of the colors that are a part of the restaurant, right? Yeah. And most client work, they probably have brand colors or yeah, specific colors helped, they yeah. want. So then you kind of are bound to that anyway. Yeah. So there's not probably as much flexibility when you're working with clients as just on fun projects. Yeah. Oh, Eric says try an even number for the little oh, lines. I want that would make sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, so it's like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll have to play with that. Yeah. Good tip. We'll try it. Try it later. See how, how it changes. So uh, now I'm going to go into just like uh, showing how I, I usually like trap, uh, like a, Shading mm -hmm. with the vector textures that I made. So I'm gonna like show how I like shade something. So I like yeah. I uh, really like this uh, his shirt. So I want to like add more detail to it. And um, it's sometimes I like uh, to start out by drawing on the screen and uh, just like drawing like the shape I want the shadow to be. And just like I I'm really into this like making them like wiggly and then just like uh, cutting them off at the edge. Okay. So. Use so you're using the pencil tool. Yeah. 
and then um yeah just i'm making i have the shape that i want and then just like uh now i have a i can trap the grain within that okay so let's go over here grab it and then um a lot of times i uh i just uh I trap it within there by, by uh, using a mask. Okay. But um, uh, if you don't want to weigh it down, like toward the end, you can just uh, do a, a pathfinder. Uh huh. Yeah, but a lot of times I want to adjust the grain, so sure. it's nice to just go like to mask it out instead of using yeah. a pathfinder, so you can adjust it more later. So I have the color I want, and now I'm just gonna yeah uh, make a clipping mask. Just gotta right click and there you go. Yeah, and then uh, I'm gonna just play with it in the shape and just like play with the edges where it. And then double clicked on the background. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's the great thing about clipping mask is then it's really easy to adjust it later. You can just double click into it and yeah. then move it around. You could change the size. You could like duplicate it easily within that mask. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you just gotta be careful with that because uh, you you can make like so many like if you're duplicating like a texture and there's you're, you're just like uh, masking it off all the time because uh, it adds that's adding more memory to the yeah. like document. So mm -hmm. you're just like. It'll slow it down. So yeah. you just gotta be, make sure you're doing Pathfinder and just like being uh, aware of it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, How do you develop ideas for new illustrations? How do you, like where do you find your inspiration? Uh, yeah, I use Pinterest a lot and I, ha I already have like people that I've been following for years on there. Like, and uh, just like mm -hmm. I make uh, different boards with uh, what I like and uh, my mind always like usually goes back to that or just like uh, things I, um, different um, techniques or things I've pe seen people do and just yeah. like, uh, and I'll, just things I want to apply to something that I want to do in my life and or thought of, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, our places you go, like this is a place that you go, you're yeah. inspired by, like, you can be inspired by anything if you're looking for it. Yeah. But yeah, Pinterest is super, super helpful for inspiration. I think, I like too, especially once you start saving certain things it learns what you like and so it shows you more of what yeah, you like and like great. or you can like click on something and scroll down and see more similar to that image so yeah that's always nice oh tim says i believe i know why the sun has the extra dash in the contour options there are two buttons that look like marching ants next to the dash line check box use the one on the right oh that, yeah that worked yeah Tim. I did not know that. Brilliant, yeah. Tim. Thank you. Thanks to Tim. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's great. Cool. Um, yeah, Kendra's asking, um, I missed the first stream. Was there inspiration for this or was it a random doodle? So this is based off of a restaurant that you love to go to yeah. in New York. Yeah, and I, I looked at, uh, just, I just like took pictures of the things I liked in there and just like, uh, I referenced cool. those like when I was drawing it out and just like, um, yeah, just other things I liked on, uh, online and just like, yeah, just uh, just kept adding more and more things that I, I liked about the restaurant. Yeah, kind of like layered into yeah. this one illustration. It's really fun. Yeah, if you missed the stream, you can watch the replay of it um, on Adobe Live. It's there, and I would definitely recommend going to watch it. And it's time for Chat and Win. So jump in the chat, say hi. Um, you'll have a chance to win some stickers, and we will be right back. We are back from Chat and Win, waiting to hear who is going to win our stickers. Yeah, stickers. So fun. <laughs> Crazy how fast it goes when everyone's waiting for those stickers. Kendra says yesterday was National Sticker Day. 
What? We didn't even know. We gave away <laughs> stickers. We were celebrating without even knowing it. Cross Design, congratulations. You will get a message on Behance about how you can redeem your stickers. And then if you didn't win, you can go to stickermule.com slash adobelive19 and you can get 10 stickers for a dollar. So make sure you do that and test them out. Um, and then if you asked a question right before the stickers or during the stickers, um, make sure you ask again um, because we probably can't see it anymore and would love to make sure that we answer all the questions. So if we didn't get to yours, feel free to um, ask it again. And then make sure that you are working on your daily creative challenge. Um, Kathleen did a demo earlier today on designing graphics for a t-shirt using gradients and adjustment layers. And you can get all the information for that right above the chat. There is a challenge tab. If you click on the word challenge, they'll have the starter file there. Um, you can um, join Discord there. That's where you submit your work for review. And then Adam will be offering feedback on those in a little bit. Um, so make sure you submit. We want to see your t-shirts. And that's a really fun challenge. So make sure that you get your work in. Yeah, that's great. Cool. I did a command save, so that's what you're seeing oh, right now. The loading. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, always a good thing yeah. to remember to do. If you're just joining, um, I'm here with Adam Kuhn from New York. Hey. Graphic designer and illustrator, and he's working on a really fun illustration um, for a restaurant, about a restaurant yeah. that he loves to go to. And um, we're talking about shapes and shading and now doing some um, shading with texture. So pretty fun. Um, Dorina is asking, how did you make the lines on the cat up there at the top? Uh, yeah, that's uh, from my original sketch. So mm -hmm. I, um, I traced my sketch and then I uh, added like the textures from the side that I uh, added below, just like I added those into the actual line, so mm -hmm. it makes it more like a furry, and yeah, I can play with like um, the adjusting them and just like getting them to look the way I want. Mm -hmm. Did you draw them with, um, what did you draw them with? Which tool? Uh, I used, I just used my pen tablet and just traced over the line, so okay. yeah. with it, the pencil tool? Yeah, or? with the pencil tool, okay. and then um, yeah, just like uh, now you can like adjust the width and like it goes with like the, the way the hair would move. Mm -hmm. Within my drawing. So. Yeah, so if you select that line, are you, are you using the width tool to change the width or are you just using the points? Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, using the width tool to okay. adjust like the line, yeah. So with the width tool, you can adjust like the thinness, the thickness, and kind of give it that really organic look. And then you add a texture Yeah. with the brush or like with which um, the brush that you use. Yeah, the brush I have yeah. like preset in there from uh, Retro Supply Co. And, um, cool. Yeah, now I'm just going in and um, it can look weird. Like you can get like this, like if you like expand uh -huh. it too much. So you just have to like make sure you're just like doing it nicely and just like uh, if it's suddenly. not working for like what you're trying to do, then just get another texture. Or... Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's like so many that you can play with. It's like you can just, uh, you can mix them and just like try different things. And you mirrored those lines on the bottom, right? So you drew one and then you mirrored them on the other side yeah i did just like to make it go faster and you can just like uh if, if you want to like make it look like less symmetrical just play with it and mm -hmm. you can adjust the width on some of them not the others or you could use the points to move them around like you're doing right now yeah so if you use the white arrow and click on the line then you get all those little points that you can play around with um eric says it's looking so good and it's amazing to see this made in illustrator oh thank you so. Yeah. Oh, and Drina says, Adam, you're the first artist that I see using the pencil tool. Oh, that's, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Pencil tool is great. I love it. It's nice. Like, the pen tool is awesome to be more, like, precise. But the if you want to be more organic, the pencil tool yeah. is the way to go. And it saves time, too, when, mm -hmm. when you draw certain areas. And just, like, a lot of times it, it makes it really even, like, when you yeah. draw it, too. And you just have to play with it a little. And... Yeah. And it smooths everything out for you if you want. And um, yesterday, um, someone mentioned that you can, like, double-click into the tool to adjust the, um, like, how much smoothing it does. Oh, that's good. So yeah. that was really cool. Um, I didn't know that. And so that was really helpful, a really helpful tip. So if you want it to smooth more or smooth less, oh, that's cool. you yeah. can adjust that. So now I'm just like uh, making the ears and uh, just like, I, I think I am just going to reflect this one just so yeah, they're even. Why not? And, yeah, and just so I can play with it if I would need to. 
Just use the, yeah, the simple mirroring tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super helpful. Makes everything go a lot quicker. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Cross Design is asking if you created the brushes, and these are brushes that you uh, pur purchased. Yeah, I purchased them. Yeah. Uh, Retro Supply Co. I, I, Retro yeah, I, I have yet to learn how to like uh, just like make the brushes the way they do. Like it's like it's like really they're really good. So yeah, I hope to make more like brushes like that in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a stream several months back um, with Hank. Washington and he showed how to, he makes his brushes and so if you're looking for a tutorial on that um, oh, That's great. Yeah, you can look that up. You can watch the replay. Um, it's in Adobe um, It's under it should be under Photoshop um, or illustration. So Yeah, that's, that's a helpful. Awesome. Yeah helpful tutorial if you're wanting to know how to make your own brushes. Nice. I like this cat. <laughs> He's really cute. Yeah, it's like all serious, like in the yeah. actual restaurants. Really? So it's like nice to just like, yeah, You're like, that gotta make it more fun. Like, yeah. More amused. You said there's a whole cat room in the restaurant? Yeah, so this, <laughs> yeah, this is like part of it. And it has like these two little like light up hands on the side, which I love. And How I'm like, fun. yeah, I wanna like try to make those light up today. And just, oh, yeah. That would be cool if you were gonna animate this to have those kinds of things, like them lighting yeah. up or the person eating, things like that. Yeah. So many possibilities. So a way I would just like make these light up really quick and is uh is adding the grain within like the between the fingers, like Okay. Mm. Well, so you drew a shape, and then you're gonna paste the texture into the shape. Yeah, pretty much like I did down below. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna, uh, yeah, mask it, and then, um, yeah. Send awesome. it to the back so there's like no edges or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it back. And then, um, yeah, really with this, you can just like uh, copy the other ones over. And, and move it. That's yeah, really cool. It's like stuff you save time because yeah. like, it'd be crazy to just go and get each one. Mm -hmm. I love the gradient though, because, or the like gradient in the green, because then it really does look like it's glowing. Yeah. It's really cool. That's fun. Yeah, so if you draw a shape, you could use the shape tool, you could use um, the pen tool, and you draw a shape, you put it over something else, and then you can make a clipping mask, um, and it'll cut whatever's behind it like into that shape, but like this, so. Yeah. Super helpful for a lot of different ways. You can crop an illustrator now, but before you could crop an illustrator, I used it all the time to just like crop pictures or like whatever I was putting in. Yeah. Um, so that's really helpful, helpful tool. Anthony says it's so cool. I love the texture. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So now I want to like make this light up even more. So I'm just gonna like um, add a light bulb in between each hand. Okay. So it's that, and just like uh, I want to like just play with like uh, adding a um, texture stroke to this and. Cool. That's fun. It really is crazy how much the the image changes once you start adding texture and things like this. It just feels so much more finished already. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, even you can have like a range too where you do add a lot of texture. You mm -hmm. can add a, add a little bit, just mm -hmm. like yeah. It just makes it more dimensional, I think. But I mean, it looked really great without it too. But then once you add it in, it feels like it just gives it a lot more character. Yeah. Yeah. A great thing is just to make sure it's all like finished and polished, like with like the flat vector, and then you, mm -hmm. the grain is just even more like uh, niceness and just like adds even more detail. After. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I used to like use the texture to like uh, save my work if it was like uh, I was bad like if the illustration was bad I was like I'll oh, just shade texture. over it yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's just me experimenting. I just like, want to see like what it looks like at the... Yeah, what you can do with adding more texture to that yeah. light bulb. Nora's asking if you, how do you handle back and hand strain? Do you ever have like just from hunching over your computer? Do oh you yeah, I just uh, have that. I don't <laughs> I, I need to like figure out something. You just yeah. live with it? That's yeah. me too. <laughs> I don't even notice like I, I'm yeah. doing it when I... I know. It's like so bad, yeah. I, I know, I always think about like, okay, I should just like stretch or like, ha like, you know, have a system for taking a break and stretching. But. Yeah, I have like one of those back support things that's like, mm. yeah, like it like moves your arms back, so. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. They have like a thing that zaps your back whenever you slouch. <sighs> and I thought about that. I've actually but... probably need that. <laughs> I need to get better at sitting up straight. Oh yeah, Tim says, I love grain textures. Me too, they're so fun. It's a simple way to add a lot of character. Yeah, so this one I just like played with a, a textured stroke and just mm -hmm. like, I, I got like this really cool, like where it looks like it's glowing almost yeah, around it, so. that's fun. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And then I can just uh, shade this hand and smooth it out first. Using the smooth tool. Yeah. Smooth it out. Just last minute things. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to try adding a texture again. And, okay. So now I want to uh, try the Pathfinder with this one because it's okay. like it'd be yeah it'd be crazy to have like so much detail in this little hand and yeah. Just want to use like a lower blue. So I'm gonna like click on the background image and uh, Control C and then uh, Control F makes it go in the front and I'm just, uh, now I have a duplicate and I can just bring that to the front to mask it. Okay. And then, yeah, and then I can just uh, use this is like uh, when you use the Pathfinder tool, like the all this information on the edge, uh, uh, you'll lose that. So mm -hmm. just make sure you're like doing it when you want to and. So yeah, so the difference in using the Pathfinder versus using a mask is that you can't really adjust it after the fact. Yeah, so just like, yeah, that's why I do masking throughout and then I go mm -hmm. back and... Uh, Use the Pathfinder once yeah, it's just, more set. Yeah, that way you can lower the file size and it's not as crazy. Yeah. So I uh, I like this hand that I made, so I'm just going to go over here and just like uh, carry it over because it is the same thing. So. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Cross Design says the colors are amazing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, it was all group, so I'm just gonna grab it. So sometimes to grab things, uh, I just like uh, click on some of the background things so I can just like grab it evenly. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I, I lock those down with Control uh, 2. Yeah. And that like helps me just so I have like a clean thing I can grab and now I'm gonna make sure this is grouped and I can um, uh, move it around whenever I need to. Mm, Lee is asking if you could change all the masks to Pathfinder 
at the same time, or do you have to do them individually? Um, do them individually. Oh, individually, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I wish. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now I have this like little uh, this dark plant. So I'm gonna go in there yeah. and just like uh, bring out more detail with the uh, lines and uh, shading. So. Okay. choosing where you're going to be shading or where you're going to add lines are you just kind of doing that based off of your eye and what like you would think naturally would be there or do you have a system for doing uh, that yeah usually i, I uh, trace the sketch but it's mm -hmm. uh sometimes i like to just like go in there and freehand it because uh you can like um the sketch is only so much like the it, um you can just make it look better and just like be more um uh, not rely on the line so much and yeah Sometimes it's preference. You can just like you can go in there and like trace the sketch that I have above and just like sure and just add that in yeah. exactly. But yeah, like right now you added that line and that is not doesn't match up with this. I know. So yeah, but just it's like, more of like your eye and what you think will work. Yeah, happen. it's like whatever looks better to you. Yeah. So just like really, it's really simple lines that you can see bring out like a lot of detail and like already like tell you like, mm -hmm. like uh, oh this is the individual leaf and mm -hmm. is there a reason that you're using the pen tool and not the pencil tool right now um yeah i uh i want these to be exactly like, precise more lines precise. so yeah if it's more organic mm -hmm. then um you you can just definitely use the, the pencil the pencil yeah And you can just add as many lines as you want and just like uh, give it more and more Keep detail. Keep building it. Mm. It always looks so crazy before you yeah. bring the size down. For some reason when I'm working with it, it, uh, it like gives me already set size over here when I click on mm -hmm, it, so I have to mm -hmm. go in and adjust it, so. Yeah. About 40 minutes until our um, daily creative challenge, so make sure that you guys are working on those t-shirts. Um, using gradients and uh, adjustment layers and making some fun designs for Adam to see. In a yeah, bit. I'm excited. <laughs> and then there's also an XD Daily Creative Challenge right after this. So if you're interested in learning about XD or playing around with it, um, that's a great way to get started. So make sure you stick around for that too. Um, they always make really cool stuff in the XD. Oh, yeah. I, haven't, I need to play around with XD, but it looks super cool. So I would highly recommend sticking around and watching that. Mm -hmm. Sean says, I love drawing an illustrator with the pencil tool. It is very fun. Yeah. It's like something so satisfying about it when you see like you draw the line and then it like smooths it and makes it all like yeah. nice and you're like, it's a good line. I and it know. seems like a recent thing. Like I remember I did that in college and like it would like crash or something like it. It seems like yeah. it's like it's like uh, like better now where you yeah. just like you can you, you can do that and it like it looks like almost like you're drawing on paper so yeah yeah it is almost like drawing on paper it's really cool yeah eric says xd all the way <laughs> yeah xd is super awesome and after the xd daily creative challenge will be an xd stream as well so um you'll get a full demo and um you can see what chris is working on which um looked like a cool app or something yesterday i didn't get to watch the whole thing but it looked pretty fun so but definitely stick around for that Awesome. Cool. I have this whole plant. I'm gonna group it so okay. it's all together. I don't have to keep um, grabbing each leaf at it every time, so I yeah. just say it's grouped and then just like play with that one illustration. It's really good. I need to get better about grouping things. 
Yeah, it's great. It's great. And, and then um, yeah. uh, if I'm sending it to a client, I go I go make sure everything's labeled, too, mm, within the group. Group that everything I, and then label all the groups. Yeah. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, the new smooth line tool is awesome, removing points and everything. Yeah. yeah. You were using that a little bit earlier. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, you yeah, just have to be careful with that one because it mm -hmm. makes multiple points. So And it can be, like, in areas that you don't want and, like, just... Make sure it's like uh, what you want in the end. Yeah. Yes, Anthony is asking if you have an Instagram and you do. Thank you. Um, what he's working on currently. <laughs> and like this, like uh, on like I get stuck up on like other details that I forget yeah. like wh where the lighting is, and I mm. go back and it's like I did like weird lighting that didn't like multiple light sources. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense. Yeah, that that's a really smart tip. That's a good tip. So yeah, so like, this is the sun. Yeah, the grain adds detail, but if you want to like have lighting with it, like um, yeah, just like make sure you know where your light source is, and yeah, try to follow that. So I'm gonna have a shadow. Uh, kind of casting over here because like there isn't light hitting this area so I'm gonna play with the grain and well it looks like the stream might have paused for some people so if anyone missed anything or wants us to recap anything let us know <laughs> <laughs> if you guys missed anything um, mostly Adam was talking about how he creates um, a circle as kind of like the sun or the light source um, so that he can reference that as he's adding shading like this and just as a reminder of where the light source is coming from so it's all cohesive throughout the um, throughout the whole illustration. Yeah. So. And this I can drag it down and yeah do whatever I need mm -hmm. and play with it. And I, I, That's cool. I like that. Yeah, I'm really into like masking and making like this wavy edge with yeah, playing with I the really shadow. Yeah, I really like that. Oh, thanks. It's so fun. But you can, uh, yeah, just do whatever you want. Like, and have it go all the way, cast wherever you want. To, like, just like you wouldn't, don't have to confine it. Like, you uh -huh. just like make sure like it goes to this edge or something. Or just, yeah. Like... And then you can adjust the edge of if you adjust the edge of the mask, it'll like add more or take away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or you could shrink it down. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm gonna make sure this is carry the shadow back to where the right layer. Pasting the place is like a, so helpful because it yes. you can just get it right where you need it to be. Lifesaver. So now, um, I really like uh, when things like disappear, kind of, and like uh, I, I don't I want the edge of this uh, bottom of the couch. Mm -hmm. So it would be cool to have it like just like disappear in the background. So I'm gonna play with that. Okay. And for things like that, it's just, it can just be a matter of just like loosely like making a place. Because I know that it's not going to go all the way up here, like here. So I just sure. like kind of mask out of area. Yeah, Jordan says, I always thought you may have done your shadows in Photoshop. Neat process of adding details. Because you could make shadows like that in Photoshop. Yeah, you, yeah, you really can. And it's like it's easier to like uh, select it and then shade mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah. And then this is uh, a lot of times clients, uh, you don't have the option to... Uh, work. Uh, you have to work a uh, vector. Yeah, you... so this is the way you can do it all in vector. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make a loose shape that I can adjust later if I need to. But it's just uh, show me where the uh, the area where the shadow will be okay. used, like the main overcast, like shadow. Uh, then go over here. And I want it to be the same color as the background to blend in. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. So yeah, each time I multiply, it's adding like uh, more information to my document and weighing mm -hmm. it down. So just like yeah, just like it'll slow it down eventually. Yeah. So just make sure you're just like using the Pathfinder too, and yeah. just like um, yeah, this is just so I know like I have it like what I want. Mm -hmm. And then once it's all settled and you're like, this is exactly what it's going to be, then you can. Yeah. Um. But I, I also have, uh, there is other ways that you can use uh, 
I think for this one, it'd be best if I just like uh, use like a stroke. Okay. And you can do like the same texture with that. So yeah. I, I started using that as well. So I I want I imagine the couch is going to be around this edge. So I'm just gonna. Okay. Do one of these, and um, yeah, these uh, the brushes I have are uh, they have like that the texture I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. So I use a lot of that. So yeah, so multiple ways that you could accomplish the same goal. So I'm gonna try another one. I really want to uh, import my brush library, so I'm gonna um, open brush library and go to other library and wherever you have it saved, this like your the path that you're using. So, yeah, and I just have this little toolbox that has like all the different things that I want. So I, oh. I, I know I want fuzz, so I'm gonna go in there and open that, and it opens up on the side here. Cool. These are brushes that you purchased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and this one um really helpful at giving me that spray paint mm -hmm. uh, look that I had before and just like at a different scale and yeah. I like uh, just trying uh, a bunch of different textures uh, together just so you don't have to have the same one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes it look more natural because in real life it wouldn't all be yeah. exactly the same texture. Yeah, I'm just gonna flip this really quick and, okay. and I can just play with it. Leah well, says this is really awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hi, Jurgen. If you guys are just joining, um, make sure to um, catch the stream from yesterday as well um, before like I mean you don't have to watch it before but if you want to see how this all got started and hear more about inspiration um, the, there's a whole replay available for you um, and if you're just jumping in um, Adam is working on an illustration for a restaurant based on a restaurant um, and sh right now showing how he does shading and textures and yesterday showed a lot more of how he built this um, all the shapes and colored it and um, kind of his process for starting. So definitely check that out if you missed if you missed it or if you're just joining. Yeah, so like I said before, I'm trying to make this, uh, the bottom of the couch just disappear in the background mm -hmm. like I like. And um, yeah, it's really great to like use the same color as the background and just uh, tr try making it uh, look the way you want. Yeah, it just adds more detail. Mm -hmm. Just this. Oh awesome. well, yeah, that makes it fade and fade yeah. into the background there. So yeah, now it's just like, a lot of it is just like uh, going through and like shading each mm -hmm. thing. So mm -hmm. I, I want this uh, edge of it to have a shadow too, and it's like working with the light above. So keeping that in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna uh, draw like the shape on the edge and just like make it. Um, the way I want it, and then, um, yeah, just crop it the way I, uh, it works with the shape, so. Cool. So now it's like cleanly aligned. We have our little shape here. Just gonna make it black for now. That's awesome. I love that you use organic, um, 
shadows oh, like thanks. that. It's really fun. Yeah, sometimes I uh, do projects where I just leave it and um, filled like that, and uh -huh. it, it makes like, a really cool effect. It's... Yeah, that's cool too. More contrasted. Yeah. We have about 30 minutes until our daily creative challenge, so make sure that you guys submit your t-shirt designs. Um, we want to see how you use gradients and adjustment layers, and you can get all the information for that right above the chat. There is a tab that says challenge. If you click on that, there will be a starter file and instructions on joining Discord, and yeah, submit so that um, we can see your work and Adam can give some feedback. And yeah. If you want to watch the um, tutorial that Kathleen did earlier, there's a replay for that. Um, it was the stream right before this one. So yeah, make sure you guys um, submit. Yeah, and uh, the thing with the brush is that whenever you make it really, like, really big, you, it gets more, the blotches get bigger and bigger. So mm -hmm. just make sure you're watching that. Like, mm -hmm. it can be weird to have like uh, ones that are smaller blotches and have like other ones that are like uh, microscopic. Larger. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, two point five in here, and just like that'll give me what I want to, and just uh, clicking off of it and taking a look of how it looks. Cool. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play with it a little bit more, and then, yeah. So now I, uh, I really like to with sunglasses. I like to like add reflections. So I'm oh, gonna yeah. like uh, play with <laughs> that. Uh, starting off the bat, I like to just make a a circle on top of his glasses. So Control C. Control C, and then uh, Control F, and just uh, bring that to the uh, front. And then I, I like to uh, just add a texture in there and tr uh, trap it uh, along the line here, and just like uh, just play with that edge, and mm -hmm. you'll have a reflection there. And you can also you can do like uh, several different things. That's so. fun, like a nice extra little detail. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab the one I used earlier and just so I'm gonna make that darker. Mm -hmm. Actually I'll make it lighter and it'll be a reflection. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a flippy mask, select the thing below. Make a flippy mask, there we go. Cool. So it's like filled, and you, yeah, you can like, uh, you can just like keep repeating the shape and adding more reflections. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really cool to do that and just like, um, and I really like uh, when you can, uh, bring it in a little bit and like have this like clean um, uh, edge yeah. along, along the reflection. So I just like uh, control alt and just bring it in you evenly. Can scale it. Yeah, and this, uh, yeah, just like what does that look like? You can like play with the opacity. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Leah says, I love watching artists do their thing. I always learn something new. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. So true. Every stream, there's always something new, or even just like people do things in different ways, and it's really cool to see people's thought process and um, how they build everything because everyone does it differently, even with the same tools. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, uh, paste this again, and uh, so now I have like another one. And sometimes I like to I like do this and like rot rotate the other side so you can um, recreate like another side to this. Oh, cool. So I'm going to uh, do that again. <laughs> Let's 
Really, I'm just like going like this and. Oh, yeah. There's like another reflection and you can play with the, the opacity of it and like it makes this like really cool like circular reflection. Yeah, that's really cool. And then um, this one I might like actually take to the edge to see how that looks and just like be it overall, add more dimension. Mm -hmm. So. I love that. It's really cool to, yeah, just lower the opacity so there's more contrast. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, a pink, mm -hmm. like, uh, cast shadow in there. And, um, and I, in my original sketch, I had like a psychedelic stuff going on in his eyes. So I want to play with that. Just like, oh, um, cool. making like a simplify. Since it's a small circle, I want to like make like a, it, it more simplified. Yeah, and yeah. Just like a few, just a few lines in there will really make it pop. That's so fun. It's fun when you get to this point in the stream where you're kind of wrapping things up yeah. in a way because then you get to see all those tiny little things that you maybe not, aren't even thinking about that really bring everything to life. And... Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Do you have, um, do you know how much RAM your service has and like what kind of processor, all of that? Because um, Alberto is saying for the amount of graphics you have, that file is not lagging at all. Like it's moving pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, I do have a good one, but I don't know what it exactly. is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I should. <laughs> That's okay. But definitely something to think about if you're going to be working with graphics and a large amount of information. Yeah. Another thing, um, I really like when things just align nicely, and I, I'm mm -hmm. going for this like pattern where there's like other layers to it that are like kind of flowing evenly. So I want to like uh, play with the offset path for this. So I'm going to go uh, into path, and then. Um, Try offset path, so it just like uh, makes another like uh, layer that you can play with. Within. That's yeah, that's super handy. And you can just make it as small as you want, and it's mm -hmm. just, it just evenly flows with the edge of the other mm -hmm. one. So yeah, and you want to make sure you click on preview like you just did, because otherwise yeah. you won't be able to see what it looks like. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna. Very handy. So it's, again, it's offset path. I'm gonna grab that, and um, yeah, sometimes I click off of it because you have to like hit enter and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Tim's showing how we could find the specs on your computer if we want to later. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> so, so that, yeah, that might just be what I want. And mm -hmm. then, um, okay. yeah. Then I, uh, you can hit object, uh, expand it, and then you have like these two lines that... Mm -hmm. Make sure that's expanded. Object expand again. Mm -hmm. Fun. So it's like, yeah, he's like, I want to be like, uh, it's like psychedelic and like, uh, I want all the excitement in his uh, sunglasses yeah. being reflected. So. That's a what a fun detail. Looks great. Yeah, there's like so many things you can do with this guy. Like add detail in the hair, add mm -hmm, lines, and mm -hmm. more shading. So, Christopher's asking if you ever use the paintbrush or the blob brush tool for anything. Um, uh, no, those uh, I I I do sometimes, but they see they're like unruly to me. Like they make like a yeah yeah they're like harder to work with. That I I would like to add more, but yeah, yeah. but you prefer the pencil and the pen pen tool. Katie says it's so cool to see this process. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and for um, joining in on the chat and asking questions. It's always fun when everybody's chatting. Yeah. And has lots of great questions like you guys do. So now I'm just like making sure his beard is uh, uh, all one shape because I uh, it's like two separate things. Okay. I'm just like going Combining in here. It's like, yeah, doing a little patchwork. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool sunglasses, Raviel says. Oh, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Awesome. 
So now we have our uh, shape that we can use the shade with. So I'm gonna focus on the beard. And Johnson says, I submitted to the challenge. It was fun to get out of the usual tools. That's what's so great about these challenges is they kind of maybe force you to use tools you don't regularly use or use them in a way that maybe you haven't used them before. Um, so if you're looking for a challenge, looking for a way to um, increase your skills and grow your portfolio, just get some feedback, uh, make sure that you submit to the challenge. This is a shadow, so I'm just gonna make sure it's darker than the black, so it's a light shadow and adds more detail. Mm -hmm. So control C, the background, and then uh, paste in front, you can do as well. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure the other layer is locked, so. And Wait, I'm gonna drag this out. Yeah, and there you go. It's Fun. Like, it's uh, just a uh, light detail, and you can like, adjust it, make it darker if yeah. you want to. <clears throat> and like, uh, I really like uh, when things have like a wave in them. So his hair will be like really fun to add uh, like a straight line across okay. with the texture. Yeah, so kind of a wavy effect. Um, Carol is suggesting that you could also use red or blue for the shadow in the beard. That would bring oh, like, that another is really cool. yeah. pop to the beard. I'll try that now. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> So I'm gonna grab my texture. And this one you just like repeat if you want like another highlight over mm -hmm. here so that makes it easier and you're working in the same one again so the same uh clippy mask yeah so yeah fun and i just keep playing with it and that's mm -hmm. like make the stroke smaller it's, it's like uh, more calculated and like everything's contained in this one shape so yeah 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 beauty of, of a clipping mask yeah <laughs> This is like more of this is like a highlight. Yeah. With the yeah with the blue so. Yeah, it kind of great. is. Huh? And it's working off of the the negative space is making the dark so mm -hmm. that's really helpful. Awesome. Cool. It's pretty fun. Yeah, and, and uh, now I'm just gonna add like a little bit of detail in his hair too, and it's like that can just be like simple lines, and then just keep it uh, that flattened graphic style that you want. Mm -hmm. I really like the personality that's developing in him. Like, yeah, he looks like a he, really fun person. He was Colonel Sanders, and now he's like now a he's his own person, person yeah. and he looks like a good time. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just like uh, using those uh, point, I don't know what they're called, but you like drag the point and make it smooth, so it, it makes Yeah, all, I don't know what that's actually called yeah, either. Yeah, all the edges are just, just yeah. like corner rounder. Cor yeah, a corner rounder, that's yeah. what we'll call it. <laughs> but yeah, super helpful um, to smooth out your lines or make those edges rounded. If anyone knows the actual name for that, let us know. Leah says he looks like a modern-day king of hearts. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, Sean is asking if this started as a sketch on paper. So how did this start? Um, it's, yeah, I really just like went. You can't sketch on uh, paper. I do that sometimes, where you like mm -hmm. take it into Photoshop and like draw over that and like keep adding detail. Yeah. But um, I just really uh, anymore, I just go straight into computer because it's like so precise anymore yeah. that you you don't uh, really need to draw on paper. Yeah. So you drew it in Photoshop and then brought it in. Yeah. Um, and you can watch the stream yesterday. Um, Adam was showing how he will put the um, the sketch on his own layer, and then you can bring the layer to that to the top and lock it, so that you can draw kind of underneath it. Yeah. Um, and use your sketch as a guide for the whole illustration. So definitely watch the replay if you missed that whole beginning yeah. stage. And I really like to uh, play with the edges of uh, the point itself, so mm -hmm. I don't. It, it would look like weird if it was like a. It would be like blocky when you zoom in. So I like playing with like rounded corners, or you can trap it within the nose itself. Mm. So it's not going over mm -hmm. the edge like mm -hmm. this. So, whatever your preference is, just like, just make sure you're watching that. Adding more detail. <laughs> now, I like to think of this guy like in different hot dog uh, shapes because his eyebrows like going with the shape of his body, like a cylinder and like his mouth. So I like try to like keep all those uh, similar, like yeah, as a basis. Yeah. Jack is saying that he thinks that those little things you can pull are called live corners. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Live corners. I should have known that. Tim. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jack and Tim. And you can pick different corner shapes. That's true. Have corners the tiny dots in the corner of the shape so you can drag inwards to round the corners. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Super helpful. I've never I've never known what they were called. Yeah. Never had to say it before. <laughs> Add some quick detail here. So this looks separate from the um, top. It stands out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of just go all over the place with the, the shading because I, I get bored with like him and then I like want to go to like another yeah, thing. Yeah, jump to a so. different part and then finish that and yeah. like, here, like move around throughout the illustration. It's really just how you work. Yeah. So control C and then I'm going to paste that in front of this so I can just trap it. 10 minutes until um, our daily creative challenge feedback. So if you're working on your t-shirts, make sure you submit them so we can see. Even if you're not quite done, feel free to submit. We'd love to see what you guys are working on. Yeah, isolation mode. Um, Sean is talking about isolation mode is supremely useful. So yeah. when you can double click and bring it into its own space, whatever layer or group you're working. Yeah, because I used to not work um, in it, and I uh, I just kept like uh, fighting with all the things around me and yeah. clicking on the wrong thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So there we go, and then um, yeah, and just, um, just keep adding more detail and like uh, I, I want to play with the edges more on this uh, these plates. So I just uh, add my own like stroke um, texture to the edges of them, like I did the doorway. So. And uh, sometimes you can just like to save time, you can just go in and like uh, with the white one, and just like all these are selected now, mm -hmm. and, and I can just play with the edge without mm -hmm. going into isolation mode. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, and just like adjust them. Mm. That's a really nice, easy way to add some yeah. texture and kind of a hand-drawn look or stamped look like I think you yeah. said earlier. So I'm gonna zoom out and like try different areas and add texture to these. Okay, yeah. And now it just like starts to be things you just click on and you can just adjust too. So it's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of fast stuff that you can put 
together. Change the color of that. Yeah, so the brush that you're using, the brush that you just used, did you purchase that one? Uh, yeah. Or is that, okay. All the ones that are the strokes, uh, the ones that are like uh, trapped, uh, some of them are, are ones I made in college and I've been mm -hmm. using it ever since, so. Yeah, but the ones, yeah, you said Retro Supply? Yeah, they're them? really good. Yeah. But there's tons of brushes preloaded in Illustrator too, so if you want to play around with those first and then see if you need to purchase things, that's a nice place to start. And I keep avoiding this uh, <laughs> building. So I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you colored it in a little bit, but you yeah. haven't really touched it much since the beginning of the stream. Do you usually have kind of something that you tend to procrastinate on? Yeah, if it's like too technical, because I know there's going to be a bunch of lines. Like, yeah, yeah. Or if it doesn't have a personality, like the characters have personality, so it's like Yeah, that's fun. kind of easier yeah. or like more, more interesting, and then this is just a building. But a building can have personality. Yeah. Just got to create it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm, I want to focus the color on this uh, gold door. They have an actual gold door, and it's like where the That's concerts cool. are, and it's like it's a glamorous door that you can walk out of. Yeah, how fun. So I'm going to dim these down. Yeah, now I'm just, uh, this is like a lot of uh, squares, so I can mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is the door, so I'm going to, I know it has a cutout here from the sketch. Yeah, I guess it says I need this brush. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's so fun to play around with different brushes and different textures and yeah. see what you can do. So you brought your sketch back. Yeah. You can see your kind of original design there. So Yeah, in the sketch, I, uh, I, I this door is like uh, where all the magic happens, so I'm like trying to have it glow and everything. And it's yeah, like, that's cool. The, yeah, the yellow really helps it pop. So. Uh huh, and it helps out that you, you change the color of the windows, so that the yellow door is the only thing that's yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sean says, does anyone here find it really hard to do even the simplest things when people are watching? It must be hard to do this live. Yeah, amen. And John. talk at the same time, you guys. <laughs> He's doing great. <laughs> yeah, I, cause I get like so focused that I don't it's, even realize like what my face is doing or like anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. But you're doing an awesome job. I feel like multi any kind of multitasking is just makes everything more difficult. Yeah. And then when people are also watching you multitask, that's like a whole nother level. Yeah. So props to you. Yeah, and I do a lot of things where I block it in and then I come like uh, back to make sure it's straight like once I turn the lines off. So it's yeah, like... Yeah, because right now it's kind of hard to see what the lines are. Yeah. The actual lines, not the, the illustrations kind of so bold on top. Yeah, so it's just great to, yeah, just like uh, you have what you need and then you can adjust it later. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, just, uh, I know each one of these little uh, uh, circles are going to be lights, so I'm going to make sure those are all yellow and like they kind of go with the door. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn my... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to just toggle uh, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. Carly's asking if you have a technique to organize your layers. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of just like grouping it and then I go into the layers panel and just like make sure I, it's all, uh, everything's right and just uh, label it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
So make sure these are centered with the door so that nice pink line like helps a lot. Mm -hmm, I use mm -hmm. that so much. Yeah, I love that. Just when you're dragging and it like tells you exactly when it's going yeah. up. So helpful, the guides. So I know this uh, door has slats in it. So okay. um, I want all those to be even. So uh, honestly, just the moving it and doing control uh, D over and over again is really uh, helpful to get uh, make sure everything's clean and goes well. So I'll make sure that's like uh, equal distance and mm -hmm. then just control D, control D, control D. And that duplicates it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it even lines up with the bottom, which is great. So. Yeah, it's very great. So now I just can focus on uh, that doorway and making uh, the lines around it to show more detail. Mm -hmm. So some of my uh, illustrations are like there's sections that are color blocking and some of them are uh, using a stroke to um, show definition. So mm -hmm. the color can do it as well. And mm -hmm. so it's like uh, I have a little bit of both. So some people just like just have no strokes and I like, do uh, color blocking and it's really nice as well. Yeah, multiple ways to kind of get that dimension that you're looking for yeah. or like the definition. It's kind of nice to be able to like mix and match them too because you have some, yeah, like you said, some areas that are more color blocked and some where it's more of a line. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I really like uh, just making like everything sparkly so I... Uh, I have like these uh, circles I'm gonna play with to make sure that um, and carry them throughout the piece. So it's a simple circle and like uh, different diamond sparkles that I can like yeah. pick up and just like uh, I, I like I those like to those. be even. So I'm gonna copy and paste them over. Okay. But, I really like those. They add like a fun, a fun, um, yeah. a fun sparkly look to it. You have about one minute to get your designs in for the daily creative challenge. So. Submit your work, want to see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And then sometimes I just uh, view things like from far away, like even. Yeah, because you've been in so close. Yeah. You can step back and see what it looks like as a whole. Yeah, because it, it can look like hideous when you uh, zoom <laughs> out and then. You're yeah. like, what did I even do? Yeah. So it's great to go back and forth and like yeah. I just grab these That's over smart. quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what where it needs to be filled and kind of balanced out. Yeah, and I can adjust it later when I zoom in. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's jump over to our daily creative challenge for a minute, and then um, we'll hopefully have time to wrap up a little bit more yeah. at the end. Awesome. Okay, so this is um, the t-shirt that Kathleen demoed earlier today. It looks so good. Um, if you want to see how she did this, um, you can definitely watch the replay of the stream right before this, but that is our starter. Um, so the challenge today was to design a t-shirt um, using gradients and adjustment. Um, modes so yeah yeah that's great our first one that's yeah really fun. I, i'm like obsessed with this uh that pattern that you're using it's like an oil yeah. spill 1960s look so yeah it looks really good that's really cool it's like uh it reminds me of like outer space and just like mm -hmm. yeah and this like Sorry. this all back here is so smooth and beautiful like it looks so nice yeah i like that the design on the t-shirt too is kind of like a different texture a different like it looks different and so it kind of stands out and almost makes it like completely separate from the background so it has some dimension. Yeah. Kind of coming forward. Yeah, I, I would That's even really like, uh, you could play with like the inside of the shirt with the uh, color that would be, like play with mm. different colors and like mm -hmm. add a tag or something. So yeah. like, different accents would be really cool with this. Yeah. Push it along, but I love it. Yeah, I love the colors too. Looks great. This is from yesterday. Um, yesterday was a calendar um, challenge, so and definitely watch that if you missed that as well. Let's see. Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that it's a circle and like a, it's a big, my eye directly goes to the circle. So it's mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, it's a f main focal point. Mm -hmm. This gradient on this like circle cutout is really nice too. The um, kind of pastel gradient and then the gradient in the back is, is nice too. Yeah, it looks almost like it's gold leafed. Gold leafed, yeah. yeah. And then the like pastel like layered on top of it, transparent pastel is pretty, it's pretty. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I wonder if like you, uh, the gold like in the image, like if you played with like bumping that up or, mm -hmm. yeah, just like make it more um, vibrant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's great. Yeah, these statues are fun too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like this gradient. I almost wonder if like, I don't know, maybe if the statues, like if you could see even more of the gradient and the statues were like, a little bit smaller or something. Yeah. It could be kind of nice, because it's really beautiful. We don't get to see too much of it. Cool. Okay, gradients are clipped in here. So you can see them there. Oh, gotcha. oh, clipped inside the word and inside this um, heart, winged heart. Yeah, I, I guess placement of it, it's, uh, it's lower on the shirt, so just like mm -hmm. maybe like, yeah, if it's up more and just like smaller would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smaller, just like a, a yeah. Bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I like that the wings go with like the letters, like the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the they're almost like a similar line weight, so that's that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then um, the heart is centered in the V, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, looks good. I like the gradient in the background too to kind of tie this whole moth up together. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I think it could be a little smaller, and then. Maybe even if you made it smaller, you can make the line widths like a little bit thicker so yeah. you can see more of the gradient. That could be fun. Fun. That's cool. It's not, there we go. Oh, I love the, um, the colors in the lightning bolt. Yeah, I, it's really fun. I, I like how you blocked it off like in its own graphic to make, and it has mm -hmm. like a clean line and just like, yeah, and it it's, doesn't like go against the image of the uh, bust itself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I do like that the the bust the colors are like reflective of the graphic too. So it feels it's totally different things, but it feels very cohesive still because the colors are all the same. It almost looks like these colors are like reflecting into this shadow here. So yeah, that's really nice. Cool. Could be a fun band tee. Yeah. It's another t-shirt. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun idea. It's almost like the microphone like going up to the mouth in a way and oh, like yeah. a giant microphone. That, yeah, it's it's fun, kind of fun. Yeah. That's cool. I like that the microphone's like a main focal piece. There's mm -hmm. like there's a way to draw your eye to something. And um, the only thing I would uh, do is just like look at the lighting on the actual like uh, microphone and just like try to mimic that mm -hmm. as much as you can and just like add more uh, depth and detail. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it's like uh, there. It seems like uh, yeah, the gradients are nice too, like for uh, for the light. But I just like um, just play with like uh, blurring the edges on them to make them look mm -hmm. even more like light and mm -hmm. just like uh, lowering the opacity. Getting rid of these hard lines here, kind yeah. of using those so that it's more, light kind of dissipates when it, it doesn't really have hard edges like that. Yeah. yeah. But it's fun. <laughs> cool. It reminds me of like the 90s where they had those cups that, uh -huh. like that. Yeah, 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 those like water cups. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. I'd almost like uh, make the band like uh, s like slightly smaller so like the B bright is like centered in the middle of the shirt like mm -hmm. that. Because this E, when you lower the arm, it's going to get cut off. Yeah. It's like Probably. Just little like things like that. When it folds. Yeah. I really like this gradient you have in the background too and I wonder if you could kind of incorporate that in the shirt a little bit, even like maybe here. Maybe it is incorporated in those letters, but it's a little hard to see. So that could be kind of fun to play with more because it's really pretty. Yeah. It's a really like nice soft um, color. So yeah. Awesome. It's 
So many submissions today. Mm -hmm. So fun. Wow. Yeah, I like that the um, the image is like uh, bleeding into the shirt. Like you picked up the detail on the edges, and like uh, it's like a mix between uh, he, like he's wearing the shirt. Mm -hmm. Color. Yeah. So it's like it's really cool. Yeah, with this that is visual. really a cool idea how it like blends in here. He's like kind of coming out of the shirt almost. Yeah, it's a nice silhouette. Yeah. I'm not sure what like, what's going on in the middle of it, like the mm -hmm. the detail there. Yeah, I guess it's a little unclear. Yeah, but. so just like, yeah, just like um, add more contrast and just like bump that up more. And it looks like flowers or something. And it looks like mm -hmm. a beautiful like scene. So yeah, mm -hmm. just like more of that. Yeah, it's a little dark. Maybe it could be, yeah, like you said, be brightened up a yeah. little bit. More vibrant. <laughs> Fun. I like this. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of like a TV mm -hmm. or something, yeah, like mm -hmm. glitching. Yeah, I wonder if you like played like even more and made it like uh, even more glitchier and like offset. Mm. Like, or like, du yeah, duplicate the bus a couple times and like have different colors or yeah, something. Yeah, that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Separate out the um, the layers. Yeah, or even play with the color of the shadows so they're not like black. Yeah. They can be different colors too. And Ooh, yeah, if these were colored, that'd be really fun too. Yeah. The overall idea is super great. So I think expanding on that could push it even further and make it Fun, nice. That's cool, yeah. yeah. I like that he's leaving the uh, frame of reference. Uh huh, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. this gradient is nice in the backgrounds. The purple to the um, green down here. Yeah, I maybe like play with like uh, the way um, the gray overlaps, and maybe mm -hmm. like uh, he could pop more if like uh, he's like in front of the gray, and like mm -hmm. there's like other things. Like uh, I like that you're playing with that though. Like the leg is cool, like cut off like that, mm -hmm. and like yeah, go back I, and forth. I agree. Having the gray behind him instead of in front of him would probably bring more focus to him. Yeah, it's, it's like he's guarded or something mm -hmm. like by tape. So yeah, yeah, like here how the leg is kind of coming through. Maybe if he's coming through here and here also. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Or if he's, you want him to be like stepping over this line, I think at least put this line behind him. I think that would yeah. help. And then even if this one's over his leg, it, he would still be standing out because he'd be more forward here. Mm -hmm. Cool, it's from yesterday. Here we go. Nice oh, gradient cool. right here. Yeah, I like how you duplicated the the shape and then that added mm -hmm. the gradient to it. And yeah, just like, it's yeah, really nice. Yeah, it makes it clean and uh, nicely done. It's not like off. It's not like um, too like off. So yeah. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. Fun, kind of dimensional, like coming forward. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for submitting. Um, there will be another Daily Creative Challenge tomorrow in Photoshop, and then right after the stream, there will be one in XD. So um, definitely check those out, and there will be a new Photoshop challenge starting on Monday. So if you want to kind of start fresh at the very beginning of a challenge, um, you can join then, but you're welcome to jump in halfway through as well. So we have a few more minutes. Do you oh, want to jump yeah. back to your illustration? Um, Adam is wrapping up this illustration for a restaurant in New York. Um, and yeah, if you're just joining us, we're kind of towards the end, but you can watch the replay of this stream and yesterday's stream. Um, Adam gave a lot of really great advice and we have about 15 more minutes. So if you have more questions, um, feel free to ask them. Um, JP says, Hello, everyone, all the way from South Africa. How fun. Hey. Um, if you could meet a much younger version of yourself and give one piece of solid advice, what would you tell yourself? Uh, <laughs> like, meet yeah. yourself like five, ten years ago. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I'd probably tell myself not to stress out as much and like it would be okay and like, uh, yeah, yeah, have more fun and all that stuff. Have yeah. more fun. Good advice. Yeah. I know at the time things seem sometimes like a very, very big deal and yeah. you don't know how they're going to work out and then they do and you can look back and be like, it worked out. I didn't have to worry as much as I, yeah. as I did. And we're in a really good community where you see other people that had like the same path as you. So you like, you can like reference like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm good. Like I, 
I need to like stress less. Yeah. Like, this person went through, through the same thing, so. Yeah. Yeah, so Drina is asking about the granny texture that you used. Um, is it a brush? Um, so you you have a couple of different textures yeah. in this. One is just a, it's a spray uh, texture that mm -hmm. is just like, a, it, I like that it's by itself and I can move it around more. You made that with actual spray paint, right? You spray painted yeah. and then brought it into Illustrator and did a live trace? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, um, yeah, and then I uh, that, there's another one that is a brush. It's like a stroke that I've been playing with, and you can mm -hmm. adjust that as well and, like, uh, play with it more on the edges. Mm -hmm. And you've been using clipping masks and Pathfinder to kind of cut the grain into the shape that you want it to be in. Yeah. Um, or drawing a line um, and using a brush. So multiple different ways yeah. of shading in this piece, which is fun. <laughs> Eric says, I think this is a self-portrait. You and your happy place in New York City. Oh, yeah. Cheers. I wish I looked that cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know. I really like this guy. <laughs> he looks very he looks very sophisticated yeah. and very fun at the same time, he which is like a great combination. And I think he's like 40 or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. He's like, he's ahead. He's confident. Yeah. He's eating some great food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us, great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, adding strokes to give more definition and mm -hmm. uh, bringing this to the front so the line shows up and... Working on that building you've been procrastinating yeah. on. Amen. <laughs> okay. For this one, I really can just like work on one window and then just like carry it over to the other one. So I'm I'm gonna start on this yeah. and just make making the curtains and everything. And that's the beauty of Illustrator. Yeah. Just copy paste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Anthony. I tend to like work with this blue and it uh, blends in with the background of like the the lines like that you're trying to drag. Yeah, so, you're yeah. so right. That's my problem there. Yeah. But yeah, I know you can change it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> JP says, thanks Adam, great answer. Keep up the good work. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, make sure to go follow Adam on Instagram, Adam J. Kuhn, and on Behance, and keep yeah. up with all his work. Yeah, I'm going to post this later, like yeah, the final the piece. Yeah, the final so. piece? Yeah. Okay, make sure you guys follow so you can see the very final final of this. It's always fun to see Yeah. the very, very finished product. Do you have any projects you're working on right now that you can talk about? Um, uh, one of them, uh, I'm trying to think. One of them is, uh, just Shake Shack. Again, like, they want uh, more murals, so I've, I've been focused on that. And another Shake one... Shake Shack. So amazing. I'm, like, so... I'm so jealous that you get to work with Shake Shack. Yeah. It's, like, one of my favorite places. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So you're doing another mural for them. That's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's like, I, I usually don't talk about certain ones, because then they, they, like, I, I'm like, oh, I lost that one. And then sure. yeah, later on, you're like... yeah. Yeah, yeah like sometimes you can't. It. Yeah, yeah. But Shake Shack is solid, you know. You yeah, know you got that. Fun. That's so that's really cool. You guys definitely should go to Adam's site. Tim just linked it there, adamkun.com, and you can see his Shake Shack um, murals and other a lot of other work that he's done for a lot of really cool companies. Carry this over. Make sure it's even. Mm 
And it's like focusing on the detail in this door. Like I yeah. do a lot of times. I yeah, I won't like retrace it because mm -hmm. I I know it's gonna be there. And it's like mm -hmm. this is like the uh, four triangles. So yeah, and you want to go off what looks good. Yeah. With everything you have, and not necessarily the sketch. Sometimes. Hi Diego, thanks for joining. Christian says it looks great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It does. I'm excited to see the final. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like so much shading you can do. So yeah. I, like, I could be here all day if I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lee's saying, sorry, I know this is a repeat question, but what's the name of this restaurant again? Uh, it's uh, Turks Inn. Turks Inn yeah. in New York. You said it's pretty new? Yeah, it is pretty new, yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I illustrated another place called uh, Sushi Noodle in uh, Brooklyn. And uh, mm. yeah, I just like want to go around and like, illustrate all the places that I eat at. Cause, yeah, you should. You could yeah. do a whole series. Oh, yeah. gosh, you could do a whole illustrated book of restaurants of New Let's York. Let's do it, yeah. That would be so cool. That would be cool, yeah. If you do it, I expect some yeah. royalties. <laughs> yes. Just kidding. So I'm just going to make sure this is even, so I'm going to reflect it and then um, carry it down that way. <laughs> and then it says, oh no, I'm late, but it's totally fine because all of the replays of Adobe Live are available to watch. Yeah. So you can just watch um, yesterday's stream, you can watch today's stream, um, and watching replays is great because you can stop, rewind, see it again um, if you want a certain, um, see a certain part over. Um, and there's so, so, so many videos that you guys can watch. Um, so make sure to check those out for sure. There's a lot of really great replays. Yeah. Heidi says like humans of New York, but restaurants and oh, all yeah, illustrated. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Whole coffee table book. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I get a lot like, uh, more like exciting ideas around food for some reason. Like I, I like love food is the best. Yeah, like, you, you're, everyone's happy about everyone's it. Everyone's happy about food. Everyone's happy when they're eating. Mm -hmm. It's really one of the best parts of life. Yeah. We have about five minutes left, so if you have any last questions for Adam, make sure you get them in now. Uh, yeah, now I'm just playing with like a detail around the door, and I kind of like that it's like fading into the blue of the background. So yeah, it's kind of just, set set back in there. Yeah, so just playing with that and just adding the the lines that I need uh, in the white. So it's a little like uh, touch. Mm -hmm. To stylize it and just make it uh, different, and, yeah. Yeah, Heidi says you could also include a story about the people that started and run. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah. Wow, it's gonna be a great group project. Yeah, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. <laughs> Lee says that it's been great to watch you work. Oh, thank you. Oh, 
Awesome. So it's, yeah, it's shaping up. I just got to yeah. uh, carry things over. A and... lot more detail now. Redo this one. So I'm just going to make sure these are all grouped together so it's like easier to carry uh -huh. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group. No. Yep. Ooh, Yale's asking, what is your favorite color? Uh, blue, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm just like, uh, this is one blue that I work into all my illustrations, and then, like, my website is that blue, so. Yeah. I keep, I keep wanting to go toward that. That's cool. It's fun yeah. to have a signature color. Yeah. It's, uh, I just Recognizable like, color. Yeah. I like excited when it's in there, and, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so Diego's asking how you did the grain and the rough edges in the illustration. So there are multiple ways that you did. One yeah. is um, a spray painted texture that you brought in. Yeah, that, yeah, I made it in uh, Photoshop and then I, uh, mm -hmm. I live traced it. So there's that one and then a lot of them. I want to watch the replay of this stream. Um, Adam showed several different ways that he adds the texture and the rough edges. And so. Um, I would definitely recommend watching it if you missed it because there's a lot of different techniques shown. So, yeah. Yeah. Arabella's asking, what's your favorite thing to illustrate? Uh, yeah, I think uh, dogs. I keep, uh, yeah, like wiener dogs. I love illustrating Wieners them. And then, uh, yeah, astronauts. I love that. And just like, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Those yeah. are really fun things. And definitely food. Yes. Yeah. Like Shake Shack. There you go. Yeah. Match made in heaven. Yeah, I'm just adding more lines and more detail, and then um, yeah, I usually uh, like once I have the lines, I can um, I can uh, yeah, just uh, add the shading uh, mm -hmm. based off of that. Once so. you have them in there, and kind of see where the shading needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you're flying through this house now. Yeah, it's like or a restaurant it's building. Cr yeah, it's <laughs> crazy like what uh, like one line can do like when you see it. And yeah, then, like, it really it is crazy. Adds so much. <laughs> Jack says, dogs, food, space. Those are also a few of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> Matt says, just looked at some pics of the Turks Inn on Google Images and can totally see why you picked it. Very colorful yeah. and cool. Would love to eat there. Great job, Adam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, that's all we have time for. Oh, awesome. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah, showing thanks. us all of your tips and tricks. Make sure you guys watch the replay if you missed it. And um, stick around because there will be an XD Daily Creative Challenge and an XD stream right after this. And go follow Adam on Instagram so you yeah. can see the finished piece. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.